Hello and uh, good morning. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Ahmed for inviting me to speak today. Uh, my name is Ian Ross. I'm a master's graduate from the University of Sussex. Unfortunately, Dr. Takataki couldn't make it today, so you'll be stuck with me. Um, so my presentation may be a bit shorter than initially said. Um, I'll be presenting my research about sustainable entrepreneurs acting in the marine environment. <clears throat> so, the living ocean drives planetary chemistry. It governs climate and weather and otherwise provides the cornerstone of the life support systems on our planet. The ocean is perhaps the most vital ecosystem, both environmentally and socially. Considering its importance, it's highly alarming that humankind seems indifferent to the accelerating destruction of the ocean and its myri myriad of dynamic ecosystems. It has long been asserted that entrepreneurs can bring about change through creative destruction and can act as a catalyst both in an economic and environmental sense. There is a new understanding that entrepreneurs can create business opportunities that include concern for responsibility of re resource use, sustainability, and also social responsibility. However, one of the pressing calls for environmental protection is to engage all the stakeholders, in particular business. So many advocate entrepreneurship as the panacea for many environmental and social concerns. Entrepreneurs have the diverse set of skills and the desire to manage the triple bottom line. However, it remains an open question as to why entrepreneurs pursue sustainable ventures and if sustainable entrepreneurs differ from conventional entrepreneurs. So, uh, on my study, uh, I looked at what motivates sustainable entrepreneurs and what are the challenges for, maining, uh, for managing a sustainable venture. I focused particularly on the marine environment, um, which is my background. I studied marine geography at Cardiff University. Um, and in my study today, I've interviewed six ventures and entrepreneurs who are covering a wide variety of sectors um, and all, in, uh, all challenging different perceived threats and also working in a variety of sectors, as I mentioned. So, marine environment opportunities. As entrepreneurs know, a problem indicates a need. A need indicates a solution and an opportunity for a business. And the, and the ocean is facing many problems. In fact, it's close to collapse. 80% of the world's fisheries are f fully exploited. CO2 is causing acidification, and pollution and plastic accumulation is having untold effects on the entire food chain. Um, the ocean also contributes 21 trillion to human wealth. That's 60% of the whole economic biosphere value. So the question is, why isn't more being done to protect this resource? And why aren't we seeing more entrepreneurship in this environment? So, it's perhaps the lack of connectedness to the marine environment. 44% of the world's population live within 10 kilometers of the coast. Despite this, approximately only 3% of the world's population actually spend time or work on the ocean. Secondly, people can't or don't see the degradation and there's an inadequate understanding of the marine environment. And finally, there's perhaps slow progress by international bodies and international cooperation. So, could the dynamics of entrepreneurial spirit put some energy and urgency into the effort. So, by examining the entrepreneur's prior knowledge, it became very apparent that all the entrepreneurs had very strong connections with the ocean from an early age. They were all highly educated, and they were all highly skilled and had long careers within the industry. They were also very uh, aware of the environmental and social problems. The interesting part that popped up in my research was that they all specifically mentioned real life, like visceral experience. Um, <clears throat> and to coin a phrase from Malcolm Gladwell, there was a certain tipping point, a real life experience that drove him finally, even though they were highly skilled, highly educated, highly aware of the problems, it still took a real life experience for them to finally uh, reach the tipping point and take motivation into action. So 
So what's interesting is even though these highly skilled and knowledgeable individuals, it still required them to take this, this real life experience to push them into action. The entrepreneurs recognized this fact and <clears throat> they've incorporated this into their business themselves. So they all had to, within their business, they all had to develop an extremely strong marketing and narrative building context within their businesses. There was a real need to engage, educate and inspire people so they would understand what the problems were and therefore buy their products or care about the venture itself. Um, many of the businesses used, <coughs> sorry, excuse me, many of the, eco many of the businesses used ecotourism because it was an excellent fit for what they were trying to achieve. Ecotourism allows, it gives people the opportunity to come and see firsthand the visceral real life experience of the entrepreneur experience themselves. And also by providing an ecotourism component allows the entrepreneur to uh, get revenue, which then fun funds the environmental and social aspect of their business. So uh, some of the challenges that these, these entrepreneurs faced within the marine environment. Firstly, as mentioned, the general pub public are simply unaware of the problems that are facing the, uh, the ocean and therefore are unwilling to pay a premium for perhaps the products or the ventures that are being created. Secondly, the physical nature of the ocean limits the entrepreneurship. It's very expensive to uh, act within that environment. You have to have a boat, you have to have a specific skill set. So there's a lot of ba physical barriers for entrepreneurs to act within this environment. Revenues and growth. So the entrepreneurs didn't like um, obtaining capital in traditional ways. They didn't like to derive rents or loans from banks or investors because they felt this would give away their autonomy to an outside influence and wouldn't allow them to act in the way that they wanted to um, and manage the triple, tri triple bottom line. As soon as you have an outside investor who's perhaps not on the same page, there might, may have been a conflict of interest. So they were very uh, keen not to have investment from the outside. Uh, secondly, in terms of growth of the businesses, Interestingly, when the entrepreneurs, found, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> when the entrepreneurs uh, grew, uh, when the business became slightly bigger and it took the entrepreneurs out of the environment, uh, there was definitely a lot of conflict. Many of the entrepreneurs created their businesses so that they could have this strong connection with the environment. They could be out there interacting um, within the environment that they love so much and want to protect. But as soon as the businesses became more demanding and took them away from that environment, there was definitely a lot of resistance. Secondly, the, so thirdly, the consumers and beneficiaries. In terms of the ecotourism, interestingly, the entrepreneurs on the ecotourism front would actually be highly selective of who they took on their, on their trips. They would actually try and select people who were change makers or perhaps leaders in their industry or had a big interest or reason to be there so that they can propagate the message that's been learned on the ecotourism trip throughout their particular industry or particular um, group. So in summary, the physical nature of the marine environment impacts entrepreneurship. It definitely limits the amount of entrepreneurship. It's expensive, it's hard to be there. Um, you need a particular skill set and a particular sort of education and background for, you, for people to be able to act in that environment, which certainly limits the amount. The unique conditions of the environment, the available markets, the unique combination of skill sets and knowledge limit the frequency of sustainable entrepreneurship creation. The entrepreneurs had particular motivations. They had an overarching strategic aim that subordinated profit seeking to environmental and social aims. Most of these businesses, their aim was not to make money. It was, it was to make revenue to put, the aim was to create revenue that would allow the business to operate sustainably and fulfill their social and environmental goals. <clears throat> these entrepreneurs are rare and, very, and operate in a very specific niche market but with the potential to create big impact when they get it right. What's so encouraging is the diverse, proactive, and inno innovative change entrepreneurs can bring to a sector that is badly in need of action. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's me. If there's any questions, uh, please.